doing too many water changes or not doing them correctly, you're putting bettas in with another betta, it's because bettas do need to feel safe with 10 mistakes that betta owners make. Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. I cleaned out a little more Inst tank last night if you guys didn't see it on my Instagram. I'm at planet.fishness. Let's try and hit 2,000 followers. Currently at 1,400. Speaking of Morton the better, today's video is going to be the top 10 things or the 10 things I guess. No. Today is going to be the top 10 mistakes or the 10 mistakes that better owners make. So let's get into it. Now whether you're a first time better owner or you've been a better owner for years, everyone makes mistakes so maybe there's something in here that you didn't know but the first mistake that better owners make is the tank. Part of the reason is because Petco, PetSmart, all these pet stores and brands that make better products don't make tanks that are actually suitable for bettas. For example, this tank that I just did a video on, if you haven't checked it out, you should, should you should watch it. But this, it's advertised for betta fish, but yet it is not good for bettas at all. Bettas should be kept in anything larger than a three gallon tank. They really shouldn't be in a bowl. The reason for that, even if it's like a three gallon bowl, blah, 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 blah. even if it's a three gallon bowl, a five gallon bowl, even if it's a 50 gallon bowl. The problem with bowls is that they don't have enough air circulation because of the circular top to it. Putting a lid on a bowl is kind of gonna be hard. Also putting a filter and a heater in a bowl is gonna be a little bit more difficult. So it's just really not recommended. The best thing is to have a five gallon tank, three gallon tank and do what you want with it. I have a list over here of the 10 things. So I keep looking at it because I'm gonna keep forgetting. But the second mistake that is very common is not dechlorinating the water or using too many chemicals. I know that when I first started my first tank, Tank, like officially my 10 gallon I was trying to put like all these different things in it like five different chemicals just to start the tank and then every time I would put water in I would put like one or two different chemicals the only thing you need to do is to chlorinate the water and just follow the directions that are actually on the bottle and every time you top off the water or do a water change use the dechlorinator now the third mistake that is often made is the filter and the heater so bettas do require a heater or at least about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in their tank but the filter is a huge thing because bettas don't like a lot of flow but they definitely need oxygen flowing in the tank so you can either have a lighter flowing filter and an aerator air stone whatever or you can do what I do which is have a sponge filter because it kind of acts as a two-in-one you don't have to have an aerator a filter and a heater in your tank you can just have a sponge filter and a heater also it provides a lot of oxygen in the tank so the water is always crystal clear and your bed is getting a lot of oxygen number four is using plastic plants or unsafe decorations there are tons and tons and tons of aquarium decorations and aquarium plants out there. However, a lot of them are unsafe for bettas because they are a more delicate fish and they have longer tails that are really delicate. So even something that's just a little bit sharp can definitely cause a lot of injuries and then lead to infections and just kind of all snowballs. I'm sure I'm playing some clips over me talking right now, but if you do want to check out what plants and decorations, like some of them that are safe for bettas, you can check out my video on what to buy for betta fish because I did show some plants and decorations in there, but that is definitely a mistake that I see very, very, very often. Number five is something that I haven't really mentioned at all, mostly because everyone has their own system. However, it is a mistake. However, it is a mistake that a lot of people do make, which is doing too many water changes or not doing them correctly or doing too little water changes. So my take on water changes is you pretty much only need to do a 30 to 50% water change once a month. Other than that, you kind of just top off your aquarium, which means you basically just pour in dechlorinated water into the aquarium just to get it back to its level because of evaporation and everything. I seem to have really good luck with my filters and just my whole system of tanks and my water that I put in there. So I don't even really do too many water changes. I don't even necessarily do them once a month. The best way to check for this, if you need a water change, is to get an aquarium test kit. You should get one that's an all-in-one kit because you do want to test for ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, all of that stuff that would be bad if it reaches a certain level. And that's really how you'll know that you need a water change. Just me editing, but I forgot to mention that to do a water change, the best way to do it so that you don't have to do many of them and so that your tank is really clean is to use a gravel vac and as you're sucking up the water, the 30 to 50% or whatever water change you're doing, do it from the bottom of the tank and suck up all the debris and food that's on the bottom of the tank. That'll get rid of all of it, so it'll clean the tank. And also you're doing a water change, so it's less stress on the betta and also it'll result in you having to do less water changes 
the tank being cleaner and it's overall it's literally just the easiest way to do it so you don't have to clean your tank and do a water change you just do it all in one number six number six is putting bettas in with another betta or putting tank mates in with the betta that don't go for the most part in order to have a betta with any sort of tank mate, it le needs to be at least a five gallon. And in a five gallon, you really can't do too many options, but if you want a betta with tank mates, I definitely recommend a 10 gallon because that will make all the fish or all the inhabitants the most healthy and the least stressed out. Also, I know that a lot of people say that females can go together, but I personally just won't try it because I don't wanna see that go down. Also, you should have an odd number. If you're gonna put females together, it needs to be a big enough tank. I mean, honestly, the smallest for a betta sorority tank is what it's really called would have to be about a 20 gallon tank and even then it's still risky so i just kind of steer away from putting bettas with bettas but you can do bettas with other fish or other tank mates which i hope to do a video on soon kind of going back to what i said earlier i don't know what number this is i think six or seven I, I lost track but basically not putting enough decorations or plants because bettas do need to feel safe and you feel secure especially if you have other other things living in your tank you want the betta to have their own territory, otherwise they will probably do some other thing, like attacking your other tank mates. But you don't want to overcrowd your tank, you want to have space for the betta to swim. However, you don't want to have so few decorations that it has nowhere to hide or feel safe or anything like that. I personally recommend having at least two places that your betta can like hide in. This one might be a little bit obvious, and if you're watching this, you're probably not making this mistake, but one of the common mistakes is not doing your research. A lot of people impulsively buy betta fish because you go into a pet store, it's in a little container. You think, oh, this is cool. This is cheap and easy. It's not. And then you end up with a lot of problems and it's just not good. I recommend doing as much research as possible. I have a lot of different videos on my channel like this one, or there's a couple other ones I'll kind of just put up on the screen right now that you can check out. I also have a playlist called like beta videos if you want to just like go through that. I pretty much every video give information, but then also look up some other stuff as well. Just make sure you have the most knowledge before getting a beta. Another mistake that is commonly made is not putting a cover on your aquarium. I know this is a bull, but I'm just kind of using it to like, you know what I'm saying? But not covering your aquarium because bettas are known to jump and if you're a first time betta owner, your water may not be perfect and they may try and escape. And even if your water is good, bettas still do jump. So always have a cover on your aquarium, obviously allow for oxygen because that's important. You wanna have the majority of the tank covered. I just gotta check my list here. The next thing is not cycling the tank. Now this one is a little bit tricky because you kind of have to find what works for you. However, you do need to cycle the tank so you can look up different ways to do that. You can do it with like fish food and you really just need beneficial bacteria to really build up in the tank before putting your betta in there. You can't really cycle the tank once the betta is in there. There are things in the store that you can buy called beneficial bacteria in a bottle and there are a few of them that work really well. Maybe I'll put them up on the screen here. Definitely need to cycle your aquarium before putting your betta in it. The next thing that kind of goes from that, I guess, is not acclimating your betta fish. So when you get your betta, whether it's in a cup, bag, whatever it comes from, you need to acclimate it to the temperature and the water parameters in the tank. So the way you can do that is whatever it comes in, take some of the water out without accidentally letting your betta out. I recommend doing half or even like 75% of the water, depends on how much water came in the, in the container. But you take out that water and then from the tank that you're gonna be putting the betta in that should be cycled, you wanna take just a little bit of water and keep putting it into the container that the betta came from in the store. Acclimating your betta is very, very important. It can weaken their immune system. It can stress them out. It can do a lot of different things. So just acclimating it for the 20 minutes, it can save you and your betta a lot of stress. And now the last thing on this list is feeding your betta. You don't wanna overfeed, you don't wanna underfeed. So personally, I like to feed fluval bug bites. You only wanna feed your betta probably like three days on, skip a day, three more days, skip a day, because bettas are known, especially if you're a first time betta owner or you're not familiar with how much to feed your betta, they can get constipated or bloated very, very easily. So every betta is different. You will learn once you have a betta or if you already do, then you can kind of get a grasp for how much or how often, not often, but how much to feed them. I think that was all the 10 things. Don't mind my writing. I kind of just like wrote this really quickly. This wasn't gonna be the final copy, but I think that's all the 10 things I thought of. Comment down below of other things that people often make a mistake with, with betta fish. Kind of give like tips, I guess that's kind of what it is, but comment them down below. And for those of you who want to know more about bettas and how to care for them, go ahead and check out in the comments what other people are saying. And also check out my other videos. I have a whole playlist, like I said, called betta videos. 
And with things like this being advertised for beta tanks, it, it is kind of hard to know what you should actually put your beta in and how to actually care for them. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, turn on that post notification bell, drop a comment and hit that like button. And also don't forget about my Halloween merch that is limited. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.